Hello and welcome to this episode of Macro Sutra. I'm TCA Sharad Raghavan, Deputy Editor at The Print. And now the latest trade data that we have for October actually has a lot of exciting numbers. They look very, very positive for the Indian economy. But is this sustainable? What led to these positive numbers? What have imports look like? All of that is what we're going to discuss in this episode. And to discuss all of that, we have with you Radhika Pandey, Associate Professor at NIPFP. Thank you so much, Radhika, for joining us. Thank you, Sharad. So now, Radhika, as I said, the numbers were exciting, but let's tell everybody about what exactly happened in October. What did the export numbers look like? And what have they done for the full year's numbers? Right. So, you know, till now, uh, if we look at the export numbers for the first half of the financial year, uh, April to September, Mm -hmm. exports were, uh, you know, very tepid and they posted a growth of 0.95% over the six months of the previous year, which was virtually a flat uh, position. But in October, exports, namely the merchandise exports, posted a growth of 17% and the good uh, part was that this is coming despite a contraction in oil exports right. because oil exports constitute around 12 to 13 percent of our exports if we look at the October number and there we are having a contraction of around 22 percent and despite that we are getting a 17 percent surge in uh, growth in October. And therefore, more encouragingly, the non-oil exports, which is a better barometer of uh, exports health, is showing a growth of 25%. Right. And the other encouraging feature is that it's, uh, you know, manufacturing sector, most of the constituents of manufacturing sector uh, uh, show a growth and very robust growth, like electronic, engineering goods, they posted you know, 40% growth, 45% growth. And even in sectors where... Uh, growth was languishing till now, uh, namely textile sector, that also posted a good growth. Gems and jewelry was facing concerns because of subdued demand. That was, that also posted a reasonably good growth. We've talked about both these sectors also. Yeah, yes. So, overall, you know, it's a broad based growth because till now, Mm -hmm. these two sectors were not showing decent growth and we were only talking about electronic goods doing well. But now we are seeing that it's uh, moving more towards a broad based growth. Again, as you rightly said we need to see whether this is uh, sustained beyond October but October certainly shows a broad-based growth uh, for manufactured sector commodities. And was can we say that this is because October of last year was very low or is this was this genuine growth? So this is genuine growth because it is coming uh, in anticipation of Christmas sales so there is Uh an increased demand uh, from advanced economies because they want to ramp up their uh, inventories uh, in uh, ahead of uh, Christmas sales so that is one and the other is also because uh, most of our exports are rooted especially to Europe and Africa are rooted through Red Sea Mm -hmm. And therefore, and there we continue to face disruption. So some of the countries are also stocking up in anticipation that there could be further disruption. So there is a a seasonal pickup in demand, uh, like we talk about Diwali, there is uh, Christmas sales. So there is increase in demand uh, ahead of Christmas sales, there the sellers are uh, stocking up ahead of Christmas sales. So that is, and therefore it's expected to be uh, sustained at least in the next month and the next month also. Okay. So that turnaround has begun in the second half of uh, uh, this year. First half, as I said, uh, 0.95% was the growth from April to September. And because October uh, showed a growth of 17%, therefore April to October shows a growth of more than 3%. So this right. is what one month of growth has done to seven months of uh, growth. I see. And uh, so you mentioned several of the areas uh, where we saw strong growth. Are there any others? So, as I said, uh, oil exports have uh, contracted and they have been contracting uh, for quite some uh, months now and that is mainly because of decline in global crude oil prices prices, as compared to the same month of last year. So, if we see uh, crude oil prices have seen a a sharp decline after the surge in September and therefore uh, that is one factor that is Mm. leading to a contraction in uh, oil export. Uh, But if we look at the 
uh, broad sectors as i said electronic engineering goods have continued to do well and they are uh, do, doing well and uh, in addition other sectors like chemicals pharma and uh, uh, as i said gems and jewelry these sectors are also performing well textile is performing well uh, ready made garments are performing well pharmaceutical is performing well so most of the manufactured sector uh, commodities uh, have shown a growth even in agri products rice has done very well our rice right. export has risen by more than 80% in october so as i said it's broad based growth and that's an encouraging part about the october numbers the rice part though could be an artificial thing because i think we had we were still we had restricted rice yes. exports uh, yeah. at the same time yes. last year yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we opened it up and yes. now we are exporting yeah rice is uh, because it's again a very extraordinary growth of 87% yeah. to be precise but for the other sectors like engineering electronic goods uh, it was already doing well uh, and some of the other sectors as i said gems and jewelry and uh, uh, the other sectors textile they have started to do well okay. because they are you know if we look at the country composition there is a, a increase in exports to some of the new markets even though their share is very small we are trying to diversify uh, to other markets and which is showing up in at least some of the uh, constituents of exports which were till now showing sluggish growth all right and uh, now what does global growth in mm. trade look like one is uh, the non trump effect yeah and the other is we can talk about the trump effect so let's talk about the non trump effect how does global trade look like yeah so we because you know global trade we need to look at global trade then only we can talk about our exports because we are a very small part of the entire uh, uh, global trade landscape uh, so uh, very importantly there was a report released uh, last month by the world trade organization mm -hmm. it's called uh, it provides outlook on the volume of global trade and it says that for the current year the uh, uh, volume of trade is expected to be 2.7% it's a slight upward revision from their april numbers so and the growth in the volume is supposed to be 2.7% 2. 2. okay. in uh, in 2024 calendar okay. year 2024 and this is an upward revision from the earlier growth of 2.6% okay so april uh, they had said 2.6 now they are saying 2.7 for the next year they are uh, projecting a growth of 3% earlier they had projected 3.3 but again you know the point is it's an improvement over 2023 right. because in 2023 uh, a uh, global trade volume had actually contracted mainly because of high interest rates tight monetary policy high inflation geopolitical conflict so global trade 2023 was a bad year for global trade right. and we are seeing some improvements in 2024 and they are expected to improve further in 2025 but there are interregional differences right. so europe continues to remain a drag on trade growth mm -hmm. uh, because its uh, import demand has been quite suppressed from uh, post after covid their demand for pharmaceuticals has gone down it had surged during covid because they needed medicines and chemicals now it has gone down and similarly their demand for automobile has gone down particularly from china so europe continues to remain a drag and europe is one uh, region which is contributing to lowering the Uh, projection for uh, global trade and in contrast asia is doing well mm. in terms of uh, you know powering import demand as well as exports so in terms of import india is one country which is you know uh, an a significant uh, country which is on the demand side you know in terms of import demand we have countries like india we have uh, uh, vietnam malaysia they are important drivers of import demand right. and similarly on the export side we have china singapore so these countries and south korea they are significant drivers of export demand so overall trade position looks better as compared to 2023 but there are uh, interregional differences europe poses a, a drag whereas asia is doing well in terms of both exports and imports and this is again as non trump effect right. trump will have a different implications trump presidency but this is before the us election the global trends in the volume of growth which is very instructive when we talk about the you know, the likely trajectory of uh, trade in india right okay and uh, of course now the trump effect yeah what does that look like so uh, you know if we look at our uh, 
uh, strategy, what has been the strategy for uh, exports by the Commerce Ministry and by the government, we see that there have been six sectors that they have tried to focus on in the post-COVID period. Mm -hmm. Six sectors and 20 countries. And those six sectors include engineering, electronic, agriculture, chemicals, and some more sectors. So there are these six sectors that they are uh, uh, focusing on, also including pharma and 20 countries. Now, uh, with Trump's presidency, it is expected that India needs to prepare for higher tariffs, particularly in some of the areas within these focus areas. So particularly right. in pharma, automobiles, engineering, goes, there are expectations of higher uh, tariff lines uh, with Trump presidency. So that is there. But on the other hand, if we see that, you know, if we try to lower tariffs and we undertake a strategic review of our uh, entire tariff regime, then it might help in improving the attractiveness of our exports. Because if we look at, you know, the entire tariff structure, there are a few commodities that are uh, contributing to higher revenue as compared to large number of commodities where tariff is high but the tariff revenue is not that high. So there is a, uh, at least this is an uh, appropriate time to review the entire tariff structure so that the average tariff rate comes down mm -hmm. uh, though it is lower but it is uh, uh, it's higher as compared to our peer economies. Its average tariff rate is around 17 to 18 percent. So if we try to bring it down it will be good to overall improve the attractiveness of India's exports. Basically bringing down the tariffs on those items that are not really impacting revenue. Exactly. In any case. Yes, yes, I yes. Understand. And that will improve our average tariff rate and that will, uh, you know, provide a strategic attractiveness to our uh, uh, trade overall. And at least we can then tell Trump we can that, tell you know, Trump, look, we've reduced we've it, reduced. the average rate has come down by yeah. this much. So it's all about negotiations. It's all about not just taking everything as given, but uh, using this time to undertake a review of our tariffs where we are losing revenue, where we are gaining revenue. So that that is one. The other is again uh, tightening of uh, outsourcing and H-1B visa mm -hmm. norms, which could have, which could potentially have an effect on IT exports. Though it's not certain that it will have an uh, effect because uh, the companies abroad have already hired people, so it's not uh, important. It's not certain that there will be a very, uh, you know, adverse implication. But it certainly is it is time to again diversify IT exports and look for newer markets, which will take some. Uh, time and on the other hand the other, other important part in all of this discussion is that exchange rate is going to play an important role of course uh, if we try to keep our currency overvalued artificially it will uh, not be good news for our exports so right. try to have a more uh, flexible regime you've seen uh, in last couple of months there have been a lot of concerns about exchange rate rigidity a lot of uh, concerns about active intervention by the RBI to uh, keep the rupee stable in fact, even I've done a story on this. Okay, uh, so that it yes. was selling a lot of foreign exchange selling reserves. a lot of foreign exchange reserves to maintain the rupee as stable. Yeah. So that may not be a very appropriate strategy at this point in time, because you know, at the on one uh, on the one hand, we are losing forex reserves, and on right. the other hand, our uh, exports will also lose attractiveness. So mm. it would be a more uh, a prudent approach to have a more flexible exchange rate policy, at least when there is a, you know, when, when there are such global headwinds to our exports. Okay. And uh, now the other side of things are imports. Right. One is that the Trump effect, he also wants to increase tariffs and put restrictions on Chinese exports right. to the US, which means that a lot of them potentially could start coming to India. So our imports might rise in the future because of that. But in October also, what did the data show on imports? So October has a very distinct picture when we look at year-on-year -year growth and when we look at sequential growth. So sequential okay. growth meaning October growth over September mm. uh, because there the festival effect comes into play because right. October had festivals, it had Diwali. So one is sequential that is comparing October to uh, September and there we say that uh, imports uh, surge by almost 20%, 19.9% overall merchandise mm. import and th those were driven by more than 50% increase in uh, uh, imports of gold. I see. So, which is quite uh, expected that because of the festival uh, season, there was increase in the demand for gold, even though gold prices were high in October. But still, the cultural st yes. considerations. So, gold uh, imports rose 
even though as compared to October of 2023, there is a contraction. Mm. That means gold imports were more in October last year as compared to this year. But when we compare October from September, there is a big surge, almost uh, more than 50% surge in uh, imports of gold. And at the same time, there is also an increase in imports of oil. And that particularly right. may be because, you know, again, oil prices are falling. So that may be a strategy to stock up. Our yeah. reserve. So, which we've done in the past as which well. Which we've done in the past also. So, yeah. that is the reason, you know, normally it's quite uh, uh, surprising that our oil exports are falling, but our oil imports are rising. That's clearly we're stocking up. Yes, right? we are stocking up. Yeah. So, that is uh, what we see in the data. All right. And uh, so, overall, then what do you think? Do you feel that this export growth is likely to be sustained? Maybe not at such high levels, but maybe in the early double digit levels yes so uh, because it's a broad based growth excluding oil exports uh, if we look at you know there's a broad based growth so at least in the short term there won't be uh, if the things continue as they are, we do not see a fresh shock to uh, global economy or Indian economy. I think exports growth would be sustained. And if you see uh, uh, for the current year, the total number of the total number that has been targeted by the government is eight hundred billion dollars. Right. Uh, this is for both ex goods and services. So right. I think that the government would be able to achieve, or it will be very uh, short of margin by a very narrow uh, margin the okay. target. But more or less, we see that you know. It, they will be able to uh, achieve but going forward there would be a need for diversification there would be a need mm -hmm. for undertaking a thorough tariff uh, review so that our trade deficit does not rise because if we look at October as compared to September there has been a big surge in our trade deficit you know in uh, September mm -hmm. trade deficit was only 20 billion dollars it rose to 27 because of higher gold and higher oil imports, imports. Yeah. so all these things need to be uh, kept in mind and uh, of course, the currency policy will play an important role in determining the, explore, uh, the attractiveness of exports in the relative terms. Right. Okay. And uh, so I have a question from uh, the audience, uh, a few questions from the audience. Vinayak asks, he says, oil and oil products form a major chunk of India's export basket. India can definitely sustain exports in this field, but in other areas, it's competitive pricing and quality that will matter. Do we have these twin assets? So he's right, you know, oil exports currently, though oil exports are declining and that's mainly due to decline in uh, oil prices. Mm. Uh, but oil exports uh, for the uh, first half of the current financial year, oil exports have accounted for 17% of our total uh, export. And going forward, we uh, see that, you know, uh, India has become a major supplier of uh, refined oil to Europe. Yes, It has uh, surpassed other countries and it has become a major supplier because it's uh, importing discounted oil from Russia refining and then selling. Uh, so oil is certainly uh, an area where uh, outlook looks bright you know we don't face such uh, uh, massive headwind mm. but on other there would be uh, sector specific suggestions are needed for textile for other sectors what we need to do where do we need to focus on do we need to focus on more labor intensive uh, exports namely textiles leather or do we only focus on the sectors where pli is doing well like electronic goods and within electronic goods also the uh, apple phones so right. that is all will depend on policy strategy but what we do see from data is that there is a uh, move towards diversification mm -hmm. which we are seeing that we are tapping uh, newer markets we are tapping uh, exports in other countries uh, in certain uh, sectors and that is uh, you know that will yield results in the medium term so that is what we need to see and how the entire uh, trump presidencies <clears throat> the entire uh, discussion will play out of course and uh, okay so aditya he says that on the one hand we're seeing a constant decline in the stock market and there's fear of an economic slowdown and on the other hand, we are witnessing a surge in exports. Can such contradictory parameters coexist in an economy? And do you think that this news can bring some relief in the current scenario? Or should we not read too much into it, uh, into this right now? 
So see, financial markets currently is being driven by a completely different set of factors because yeah. after uh, election results in the US, dollar has been strengthening. Mm. And when the dollar strengthens, the bond yields in the US uh, rise so that uh, you know narrows the differential between US and Indian asset and reduces the attractiveness of uh, EM emerging markets assets in general, India in particular, and leads to FPI outflows. And secondly, we saw the Q2 results results of uh, companies were not that great and these two factors in uh, conjunction have led to subdued performance of financial markets right. and also we have seen that we did the uh, preview of Q2 GDP numbers last mm. week and we saw that GDP number is expected to be uh, moderate it will exp it will be lower expected to be lower than the q1 number so right. that is on the growth front exports as i said it's mainly due to uh, factors like improved uh, global demand uh, in uh, ahead of festival it just we need to see that we should be able to sustain this uh, export demand not at such a high level 17 18% but a reasonably at least in the positive territory we should yeah. have uh, so that we are able to achieve the target that the government has set which is not a very not a very super ambitious target is quite reasonable and can be uh, achieved at least till the in what we have seen in the first seven months okay so there you go the october trade numbers for us looked very good on the export front our exports grew in strong double digits this was mostly driven by the fact that a lot of our export markets they're ge gearing up for christmas so they're importing lots of goods they they want to prepare for the holidays as we also did in the run-up to Diwali. And uh, the other thing is that uh, our imports also grew quite sharply, mostly because of gold imports. And that again had a festival effect, uh, a festival reason because October was when Diwali was. And in the run-up to Diwali, of course, we all buy a lot of gold. So our imports went up. Now, whether this can be sustained or not, because the global growth outlook in terms of trade is looking better than it was but still there are factors like uh, Donald Trump uh, his presidency and the uncertainty that that brings to global trade there's still geopolitical factors at play the Red Sea crisis and all of that so the challenge for India is to sustain this growth in exports after December after Christmas is over into January February March to sustain the growth in those months as well. But on that note, that's all from us. Thank you so much for watching.